there's also been a lot going on between Vlad and my son. I know they've had a relationship for a long time. Did you know my son back when you worked at Vlad TV? Uh, yeah, I didn't know my son in the sense that like I talked to him, like I've been in the car with him or wherever, to, or in, like the room with him and stuff like that. I've been at events and my son was there. He probably wouldn't even remember me if he saw me. Um, but I was around when my son was around, he, you know, he used to come through to the office every once in a while, or he would, you know, pull up at events like battle rap events, Vlad would bring my son. Basically my son, I saw the blog that he, uh, posted recently talking about how he defended Vlad because he felt like Vlad was his friend and this is that. And the third salute to my son, you know, if he really believed that salute to him, but Vlad, I don't know what their situation was in terms of, cause Vlad was, uh, my son said that Vlad told Royce the Five Nine that he used to, you know, give my son money for this and money for that, and he used to pay my son this, and you know, pretty much putting them on blast. And my son thought that was a friend. None of your friends would ever put you on blast about how they hold you down with money. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what their arrangement was back in the day, but the way Vlad looked at my son, and I could, this is just facts from what I saw is that my son was like his unofficial bodyguard. You know what I'm saying? He was a dude from the streets that everyone had respect for. So Vlad knew if I walk up in this spot, someone sees me, they might have a problem, but they see me with my son. They gonna think twice before they try son. You know what I'm saying? Um, I remember the first battle rap event we went to, it was a smack event. And um, I don't, it was when John John and Kayshawn battled I think it was Chilla Jones and B-Magic and I believe Rosenberg Raw and Big K battled at that event. Don't quote me, but I believe they battled, uh, they battled at that event too. We all know I went to school for cosmetology, so I'm curling the iron. She lying here, fire squeeze, nine and knees. If you don't want bullets to rip tracks, you won't have to bob, then breathe. <laughs> Right, I do the East Coast niggas too. I surf through with a shotgun. Shit gone wrong. All that dick riding you do, get off my John John. Get your shine. You think you rich? Getting your flaws? Someone up about them clips on your newborn. It'll be long gone. Talk at it and act conceited. I'ma grip that llama. All y'all gonna hear is that kaboom. I'll get this nigga Jimmy Hoffa. Do the math for the raw. Then this nigga flip my niggas trap. You'll get your head iced and you'll chill a bit. <laughs> Today, I promised I wouldn't play with you. See, you know, there's a list of other rappers that should be here replacing you, and with that being said, let's not make it debatable. That's some shit he told QP. Why, you was worried for the win? Because how the fuck you got clean, but you dirtier than him. <laughs> I remember we at one point were on the stage and you know it's battle rap it's hip-hop so you got you know a lot of goony looking dudes around and stuff like that but it's battle rap like people not there for static you know what i'm saying but vlad he didn't know people and he's paranoid and stuff like that so my son went to go get drinks and vlad in that moment he knew that i boxed like a fight and stuff like that so he was like yo my mic like yo just come over here stand, stand close to me bro stand close to me until my son comes back like He was legit telling me like you're awesome like be my bodyguard for a second type of thing you know until my son comes back so i think that's how vlad viewed the relationship of my son my son might have thought of vlad as his friend but i think vlad just looked at him as his street protection personal opinion
Mm, well, that's unfortunate. Have you ever heard Vlad talk badly about other people or use harsh language against you and other members of the staff? Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, I've definitely heard Vlad use um, harsh language towards a number of the employees. He's talked spicy to me in the past. He's talked, you know, hot towards uh, a number of people. There's actually one of the former supervisors. So after Sonny left, the reason that Vlad TV, I'm not gonna say didn't crash, but didn't suffer way worse than it would have if this woman wasn't there. Um, there's my former supervisor, her name is Christina. She actually had um, a lawsuit uh, against Vlad. It's actually like online on Google. You guys can check that out. Christina Santee versus Vlad TV. Um, and she spoke about, you know, moments where she encountered, uh, you know, foul language from him or maybe he would bring celebrities in and celebrity would, you know, talk hot towards her. And she even spoke about how some celebrities, you know, they feel entitled, try to touch her in a certain way, like sexual harassment stuff. And Vlad would just kind of brush it off like, you know, men are different, you know. Um, you'd have to look that up and read into it. There's a whole bunch of details. I'm not gonna, you know, stay say too much on that. Remember there was one time when um, Fredro Starr and uh, Sticky Fingers were making like their media rounds and stuff like that. And Fredro got into like an argument, he argued with Charlemagne on Power 105 over the whole 50 Cent in, uh, situation. And there was one time that he had them come over to the office and he wanted me to Basically, he wanted me to get into a beef with, with, with Onyx, with Fredro Star and Sticky Fingers over whatever. He wanted me to ask him a question that would piss them off and make them want to fight me. Pretty much. That's in essence what it was. So I saw like I, I've crafted my own questions more geared towards like their music and stuff for their career. You feel me? Um Vlad sent me his own questions and all them questions were wild drama feel like I remember I read them and I was like yo come on bro like I know what you're doing you know what you're doing you know what I'm saying so I remember where I'm in the interview and I'm talking to them and I had to ask uh Fredro Starr about the 50 the 50 situation so I literally was like yo my man like sorry but I gotta ask bro it's the job uh, I asked the question about I don't remember what I asked something about him getting jumped or something and he started getting hot and getting angry. I try to, you know, continue the conversation. He's like getting more and more hot and more angry. And I had to tell him, like, yo, my man, you getting wrong, you getting mad at the wrong person. Like, relax, bro. Chill out. I'm not the one that made these questions. Vlad sent these to me, and these are what I have to ask you. I'm doing my job. So all the extra tough guy, I'm gangster this, calm down. And because I diffused the situation by basically being like, bro, I'm asking you things that I'm paid to ask you. It's not me. I don't want to ask you this stuff. Vlad got mad at me. He got mad that I didn't like ignite the, the, the drama further and engage them in beef to then get views for Vlad TV. He was, he wanted me more. He was more focused on me putting my personal safety um, on the line for the company rather than ensure that I'm okay during this interview. That's the type of person that Vlad is. Another thing with Vlad, man, that was really the blow, especially back early on when I was making like no money was his finding system. Finding system, what do you mean by his finding system? Exactly that, a finding system. So what he would do is, let's say you posted an article that had a, a typo in it, something was wrong with the title, something, uh, something was misquoted, the irony. <laughs> um, just something was wrong and he got upset about something. You did an interview and the person that would, it was someone that, you know, wasn't too well known and they didn't do numbers. So whatever the case was, he would find you. He would chop off, you know, 25, 50, 75, hundred dollars from, from your check. Um, so yeah, he used to, he used to drop out a lot of fines and battle rap dudes don't even know that I used to get fined heavy to bring on certain people who unfortunately didn't produce the type of views that Vlad wanted to see. So dudes would start calling me like, yo, could I pull up to the to the office, da da da? And I would be like, yo, bro, like I, maybe I brought them there before and they didn't produce views, so I couldn't bring them like, yo, oh, man, like I'm sorry, I can't, bro, I can't. Like I had to dub a whole bunch of, you know, interview opportunities with people because I was gonna get my pockets tapped, facts. <laughs> like Vlad was hitting me with the shotgun shug, you know? Um, on top of that, when it came to building up, uh, you know, status within the, the job, 
over the years, I felt as though I earned the right, you know, to uh, to ask him at least, yo, bro, could I maybe post a friend of mine who's an upcoming artist or their aspiring, aspiring artist? Could I post, you know, their music? Shout out to my boy Marlon Kraft, yo. Look him up. I grew up with him in Hell's Kitchen. That's with my boy from my block. He's paved the way for himself incredibly, like more so than a lot of people can independently without having any type of like real legitimate backing. Uh, he's just done everything himself. Um, Marlon used to hit me up. I remember, I think it was his very first music video when he asked me, yo, could you post it on Vlad? Cause dudes frontin' like they ballin' but be hackin', that's foul, I'm callin' technicals Cause if you wanna get technical with this rappin' shit They couldn't hang more than my testicles In a nice infested pool in a vestibule In Antarctica that no working heating unit is central to If all this fake shit in the mouths of these dentured dudes Impresses you, this shit will let me show you my dreams Plot to get rich off bars, it's a rhyme scheme And he didn't know, but by then I had gotten fined mad times Like I got fined for posting my cousins artist friends uh, video on, on the music channel for a whole bunch of stuff. Um, and Vlad, I asked him, I said, I'm gonna ask, but I can't promise anything. And I asked him, he said, nah, I posted on, I'm not gonna say what it was called, but Vlad used to have this like back page private link where he would, you know, people would pay him to get, you know, posted on Vlad TV, but what they would be, the link they would, the, the part that they would be posted on was a private link. So. You could tell your friends, yo, I'm on Vlad TV. And then the people visit their site and they're like, where? Like the link was only available if you sent it out to people. So basically you're on Vlad TV without anyone ever knowing, you know what I'm saying? Um, so Vlad used to swindle with that often. And he told me, he's like, yo, post it to this thing. And I was like, yo, Vlad, like respect, but you know, nobody visits that. Like he's not going to get, that's not going to do anything for him. Could I at least... I'm not gonna post it on the homepage, but I post it on the music channel. Nah, 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 don't do not do it, Mike, don't do it. And I already knew, like if I post this, I'm gonna get fined heavy. So like I said, I got fined crazy amounts of time um, for battle rap stuff, interviews, for posting other artists and stuff. So I had to tell my boy Marl, I'm like, yo bro, I'm sorry, man, but I'm a, like, I can't, like it's, it's a dub. And the one he wants me to post it on, it's not gonna do anything for you. Shout out to Marlon. He paved the way on his own, he did his thing. But I was I was tight about that, man. And one of the absolute most annoying parts about uh, Vlad's finding system was the fact that, so I was paid essentially initially before I got into interviewing and going to, you know, special red carpet music events, blah, 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 all that other stuff. My essential job was hired to be a writer. So I'm hired to be a writer. At Vlad, on a daily basis, myself and pretty much all the other writers in, in the office, Sneaker Watch, Vlad TV included, we would produce anywhere from like 10 to 20 articles every single day per person. It wasn't like it's 20 articles total. No, it'd be like 10 for me, 12, 15, 20 for me, and that, mu that many more for someone else. You feel me? Like we produced a ridiculous, ridiculous amount of content. I used to write, I used to pride myself on quality over quantity when I was starting out there. And I used to pick articles that like, to me, it seemed like, you know, something that like was really meaningful, um, like a topic to talk about, but it wouldn't necessarily generate the same type of views that like the big drama, the ratchet, negative type of articles did. Um, but I used to pride myself in writing quality pieces. So I'm talking about, like, it was like a newspaper clip. It would have like, I don't know, like four, three, four, five columns. Like it was like six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 paragraphs per article. Like I was actually writing lengthy quality pieces, trying to fact check, get all the details right. Um, and I remember to the point where like, I used to get told by, you know, the, the higher ups, the, the supervisor stuff, um, yo, Mike, dial down some of your details, like respect, bro. But the quality that you're writing right now is like too good for what we're producing at Vlad. Like that's literally when I first started working there within the first like six to eight months, I used to get told that all the time. You're writing too much detail. The quality is too good. Just shorten it up. We're going for views rather than trying to put together a newspaper piece. That's, you know what I'm saying? But the finding system, one of the absolute most annoying parts about that from what I just said is the fact that I was hired to be a writer. I was not hired to be an editor. So you have to think about it, logically speaking, if you're writing 10 to 20 pieces per day, I don't care if it's one paragraph per article, if you're writing 10 to 20 of those, 
you're not going to be like from hour one, uh, one through eight, hour one through six, one through 10, however long you're in the office, you're not going to be as consciously aware of spell checking, grammatical errors and stuff like that. Um, by your sixth hour in the office as you were in your first hour. So as a writer, my job was to produce content. So I'm typing. If a little um, period gets forgot to, uh, uh, gets put in the wrong spot or a comma somewhere, or, or there's there's a, a, a typo in this sentence and this sentence, or maybe it's, a, you know what I'm saying? Certain little grammatical errors is gonna happen, but that technically speaking is not my job to check those grammatical errors. Why? Because you had, Vlad had an editor that he hired to edit the articles. And yet when Vlad would find people uh, for the typos and grammatical errors in the articles, he would not find the editor. He would find me and all the other writers. Mike, there's a typo on this. There's a grammatical whatever in that. There's something wrong with this. This quote was misquoted in that. So I'm finding you $25. I'm finding you $50. So I took that for like two years, I would say. A year and a half, two years. And the thing is, I've just been groomed. You know, you grow up in New York. You grow up from like the 90s, 2000s. And hip-hop culture, you know what I'm saying? You kind of grow up, and even without hip hop culture, just like you grow up in New York, like you grow up kind of like being aware of like snitching and not snitching and stuff like that. So even when it came to like the office and I would see people on some bullshit, I just looked at it as, yo, if I say something to Vlad about this, I'm snitching on this person. So I can't say nothing about that. Like I just got a POP hold it down. So when it came to the editor not getting fined for messing up on his one job, To make sure that articles don't have no issues, I, I didn't say nothing for, like I said, like a year and a half, two years, because I was just like, yo, like, I'm, a, I'm not trying to snitch on this man. You feel me? That was my literal logic. Like, I'm going to take these fines because I'm not going to snitch on this person. But over time, I just, I had enough of that. And I hit him, hit him up on that. I'm like, yo, Vlad, like, he literally fined me, like, 75 to like 150 dollars i don't remember how much it was but it was somewhere within that ballpark 75 to 150 in like one day and i was like yo vlad you wildin bro like you hit me with a heavy heavy fine day today bro and all of those things are grammatical none of those are with like quality of writing or something like that it's all grammatical errors which falls into the category of editing which i'm not paid to do so wouldn't it be me more logical if you were going to dish out fines i'm not trying to get my man fined but either you find both the writer and the editor, or you don't find no one at all, or you find the editor for not doing his job substantially enough. Because I don't know why I have to continue to take all these fines for things that are not in my job description. And he was on the phone with me, and he was literally like, oh. Like, like he didn't even think about the fact that he was paying someone for years who's not doing his job correctly. He literally, it never clipped at him until I said that. So then after that, he was like, all right, well, and he, no disrespect to the editor, but I think he started dishing out fonts to the editor after that. But that was one of the wildest flaws. And like I said, like two years, I just POP held it down and just took wild fonts so I didn't have to snitch on the editor. And by the third year there, after hustling and slaving for two years of working seven days per week straight, finally being able to break $52,000 earned in a year was like the absolute biggest accomplishment for me. Like I remember when I saw like my W-2s how much I had actually earned for the year. Like I said, it was below 60, it was higher than 52. I was just like, oh my God, like I'm, I'm making money now. Like this is incredible. I was so, so hyped, but at the end of the day, for the work that I was doing, for the work that everyone in the office was doing, myself and everyone was drastically uh, underpaid, drastically. The supervisor, to my knowledge, um, was only making like 60,000. And think about that title, the title of that, of that, 
of her position. Uh, and I'm not, I don't know what Sonny made. I, to this day, I never, I never found out what Sonny made. But I'm talking about Christina, um, who has the open the lawsuit or had the open lawsuit against Vlad. And what I read in the lawsuit, she was only making like sixty thousand, and she was think about again the title, supervisor, supervisor of an entire company, only pulling sixty k. I saw the man's YouTube numbers. I think it was my second year there. Um, Christina was reviewing things, reviewing numbers, and I saw the income that he made off of YouTube my second year there. And this was, I think this was even before Vlad had hit like a million subscribers. Maybe he just hit like a million and some, a million and some change, but now he's at like four, four plus mil. This was bef way before he had all the subscribers he had. And I remember I saw how much money he made for that year and I was like, yo, like my man could have paid everyone's salary and then some. He could have paid everyone's salary with a substantial raise and still been good. You feel me? Well, with all the people that, you know, said we're contacting you to get featured on Vlad TV, did you ever get hit up by some artist who actually managed to blow up? Yeah, yeah, actually I did. Um, <laughs> funny, Dej Loaf, uh, her manager, I don't, and this is again, this was by my, I think my third year Vlad, I had really boosted my notoriety and my status within the company and within like it's like just general media um because i don't know how he he just hit me up on twitter i think like with a dm like yo i heard you're the person to talk to to make things happen at vlad i got this artist she's coming up blah, 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 blah. and i was just i saw that and i'm like i didn't even know that i was known like that you know what i'm saying but i've had that happen to me a few times with artist managers contacting yo blah blah blah, blah. i'm like oh snap all right but yeah Dej loaf um, this is right when I think Try Me came out, but it hadn't like super blown up yet, but it was getting like radio play, s some media coverage and stuff like that. She was like steadily gaining traction, but she still wasn't like known, known yet. You know what I'm saying? So I had never heard of her. A bunch of people didn't know who she was, but I was like, you know what? Let me, let me see if I can, you know, pass the word on to see what Vlad says. Um... I hit him up, like, yo, Vlad, there's this artist from uh, Detroit, Dej Loaf. She's, you know, apparently going to be, like, the next big thing. Her manager just contacted me, wants to know if we could do an interview. And Vlad's like, you ever heard of this person? I was like, nah. He's like, yeah, I haven't heard of her either. He's like, what? what's the song? I was like, it's this thing called Try Me. And he was like, eh, nah, never mind. Well, we'll pass on that. Wait till she gets, wait till she blows up a little bit, and then we'll bring her into the office. And I was just like... All right, but I mean, what if she blows up and you have like early footage of her blowing up? Then, you know, you're kind of like in a better position because you're like a person, a big media outlet who maybe potentially helped discover. Her. He's like, no, 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 wait till she blows up. I was like, all right. So I hit Dej Loaf's manager back. I said, yo, sorry, but uh, right now, Vlad is going to pass. I'll contact you if that changes. Literally, like seven to 10 days later, pretty much the next week, boom, try me everywhere try me try everywhere 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 and vlad i remember he shot me like an angry text or call like yo mike yo why haven't we why haven't we uh interviewed dej loaf yet and i'm like my man like i literally hit you about her last week and you dubbed the interview he's like I bring her to the office like he, he got mad tight i'm like yo bro like you didn't think she was worthy of it back in the day you know what i'm saying that's vlad he's most likely not going to give you a shot. You're going to have to just pave the way on your own. Vlad just had always had kind of like a foul way of just operating. He was always just about where's the money, you know, where's the money? What's this going to generate for him? And that way of operating was very, very um, present in the way that he did business with Battle Rap. You know, we hosted one event and y'all never heard from us again.